Hey beer lovers and welcome to another Beer Geek Blind Taste Test. This week we're tackling one of the most common questions we get on the channel, which is, should you be buying supermarket beer? Is it ethical? Are there good beers to be found in supermarkets? And should breweries be supporting supermarkets? And we're going to address a lot of those questions as I taste through 22 22 different IPAs from British supermarkets. But I'm pleased to tell you that I have found two absolutely world-class IPAs amongst all of the dross that I expected to find. And we're gonna be digging into that and all of the questions as we go through this tasting. So join me for 22 PR IPAs from Asda, Morrison, Sainsbury's, Tesco, M&S, and Asda, did I say Asda? I'm not even sure at this point I've drunk 22 IPAs. <laughs> Right, it's been a while since I gave myself a hangover in the middle of the day, so I'm looking forward to this. As always, the rules will be the same. I'm marking out of 10 for aroma, I'm marking out of 10 for palate, which includes flavour and texture, carbonation, stuff like that, and then also out of 10 for aftertaste. So that's when we're most likely to pick up any kind of flaws, and I'm really expecting to get some flaws in here. All of these beers are going to be kept at shelf temperatures for some time. None of them were in the fridges in any of the shops that I visited, so we're going to expect that they may have gone stale although they are all uh, within three months of being brewed uh, but we might get some hop creep we might get some uh, staleness that kind of flavor so we'll be picking those up um, the only difference this time is that I'm not going to be marking strictly to style which is how occasionally we've ended up with one of my favorite beers not actually scoring that high because it wasn't quite to style here we're gonna have IPAs that are hazy IPAs that are clear like West Coast IPAs we're gonna have IPAs I don't know there might be some sour ones there might be some fruited ones you know I can't really mark to style with all of that going on so I'm literally going to rate them by a looser style of IPA so is it really hop forward is there any balance or structure to it and is it flawed or is it perfection um I have no idea what to what to expect. I don't buy a lot of beer from supermarkets, so let's just get stuck in with number one, which is definitely going to be a hazy boy. Well, that's a strong start. Smells mangoey. Yeah, nice tropical mango, a bit of kind of lemon, a little bit more acidic kind of notes to it. Nice aroma, not huge, but plentiful, bountiful. Soft, light tiny hint of earthiness perhaps um just from maybe a, a big dry hop that just comes through on the aftertaste a little knock off point there palette for a hazy is a, is a shade thin but nothing nothing too bad that's a really good beer i feel like that's been put there on purpose to to put me off uh aroma was great aroma's an eight palette not quite as good just a shade thin for me for like a juicy beer uh, seven and aftertaste had that hint of earthiness didn't you know wasn't quite as good as the aroma so that's a seven but like I always say 20 is a good score in these and that's a 22 so that that could be the winner uh, juicy oh I put it in caps no yeah, I'll stand by that but a shade earthy and thin uh, if I got that from a supermarket I'd be absolutely bloody delighted beer number two whoa very very different so clear definite crystal or Munich well, yeah, I'm going to say that's crystal. <laughs> Loads of kind of crackly burnt caramel things. Bit of resin and pine as well. Smells pretty good. A little bit too malty. Feels like maybe they've, they've scrimped on the hops a little bit there. There's not huge hop aroma. A bit undercarbed, um, which isn't helping with the sweetness from the crystal. No real bitterness to speak of, like lager levels of bitterness, um, which doesn't help with the sweetness either. And then there's some resin and piney stuff. There's no fruit character to it. There's no grapefruit, citrus, none of that. It's very much, very much on the on the woody side of, of American IPA. Uh, right, we're back in back in Hazy Town. Looks like a lovely beer. Really nice colour to that. Nice and pale. Yeah, and again, decent aroma. This one's a bit softer, a bit more kind of peachy, stone fruity, less less citric and tropical. Probably a bit more yeast character to it, I'd imagine, as a result. Like, lots of these New England yeasts have that kind of peachy character to them. It smells good. Oh, yeah, lovely rich body to it. But surprisingly little flavour. That's an odd one. Well, not a lot of bitterness there, but it's a hazy IPA. I'm not expecting huge amounts. Just kind of lacks a bit of structure. It's just a bit watery. 
you know, just a little recipe tweak, bit of bitterness, or maybe a, you know, a little bit more hop kind of character, a little bit more acidic kind of hop character, maybe a little pH switch, and that would be a very nice beer. As clear as day, nice and pale. I'm assuming this is going to be a Westie. Uh, very pale for a Westie, a modern style Westie. Not tons going on there, but there's definite fruitiness, like almost like a white wine acidity and gooseberry, maybe Nelson, I don't know, just like, it's not tropical, it's not piney, so I don't feel like it's either like modern American or sort of classic American. But yeah, a bit muted. Almond. Slight kind of nuttiness to that. Not quite sure what that is. Yeah, not sure. Um, again, very thin, no real bitterness to speak of, a bit like this one as well. Like, if you're going to brew a West Coaster, there needs to be some bitterness to balance and, and, and give it punch, and it's not quite there. Kind of wishy-washy, you know, just nothing really to it. I couldn't tell you what that tastes like now. Like, I feel like already those tasting notes are a bit wrong, and I only drank it 30 seconds ago, just kind of unmemorable. Um, but two great hazies out of that and two slightly flawed Westies. So that's not a bad start. I thought it was going to be worse than that. Maybe there's still time. Okay, round two, three hazies, one clear. That's about the proportion that I expected. Uh, looks like a perfect hazy beer. Lovely, bright yellow, Tropicana kind of vibes. Fluffy head and peachy aroma. Ooh, like a tiny bit of coconut there. So maybe some Sabro or Talus or something there. Yeah, peach, peach and coconut, delicious. Yeah, kind of lemony and citric and really fresh. That coconutty thing comes through. Beautiful beer. Man, that's um, lovely bitterness, lovely but That is hard to fault. Is that a nine on the aroma? Palette is great. Maybe lacking a little bit of character. There could be some more kind of hop flavour to it. Didn't quite translate from the aroma, but it's really, really good. And the aftertaste was great as well. Again, I'd want a tiny bit more bitterness, but absolutely flawless in, in most regards. That's a stunning beer. Uh, right, going to get very different character now. So very, very clear, very, very um, West Coast looking, almost lager looking, really. Big lemon and a little bit kind of uh, real ale, real ale yeasty kind of thing. I, I still don't know what that flavour is. I've talked about it all the time these blind taste tests. Just a little bit earthy and gnarly, but not unpleasant. Layered with loads of citrus, lemony, grapefruity stuff. Probably a regional brewery having a stab at IPA and doing all right. Definitely a regional ale brewery. Um, yeah, it's got that kind of classic British... Uh, Tokarski, I hate using that term, but it's just a flavour that I'm familiar with from like drinking bitters and stuff like that. But loads of citric kind of character. Decent whack of bitterness. The most bitterness we've had so far in this taste test. And that's definitely a West Coast style, so it's pretty good. Back deep into the fog. Not as unctuous looking, not as rich a head as that first beer. Kind of a coconut tangerine-y, talisy thing. That's kind of it, really. Coconut and tangerine, tequila sunrise-y kind of thing. Sorry, pina colada kind of thing. It's a sunrise that, I don't know, you blink and you miss it. It's not a lot going on there afterwards. So, really nice aroma, just, just dies a death. That's very weird. Yeah, real shame. I was quite excited about that and then it all went wrong. Ooh, that is a thick... Some, some hazy IPA sort of seem to suck in the light. They don't look bright and fresh. They look, well, they look oxidised, to be honest. Oh, something's gone wrong there. Uh, not very fresh hops, I'd imagine. It's oniony and green and earthy. Smells a bit like spring onion. So interestingly, like flavor-wise, the sweetness is right, the carbonation's right, the body's right, the bitterness is right. From a technical perspective, well brewed, but just bad hops have gone in there. Or, you know, it's you know been beautifully packaged but still gone stale, so that hop aroma's died off. Um, yeah, real shame. Like the worst aroma we've had so far. 
Whew, it's getting uh, it's getting hot and hoppy in here. I'm gonna have to remove remove a layer. It's the tropical vibes of all these surprisingly good IPAs. So it's hazy again. Not a huge amount of head sticking around on this one. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, good lord! So much fruit on that. That cannot be hops. Absolutely no way. Yeah, mango and pineapple and all kinds of stuff going on there. That's a definite fruited beer. It's so fruity a wasp's come in. That's how fruity this beer is. Oh my god. Wasp. Go away. Go away wasp. This is my beer. As we were. Wait, where's the beer? There's the beer. Uh, right, so this is a fruited beer. It's okay, balanced, probably not the right word, structured, nearly, it's got some bitterness, it's got some nice body to it, loads of aroma, <laughs> really nice beer, you know, if you, if you can tolerate that level of fruitiness, very, very nice. Crystal clear, super bright, that is the palest, clearest beer we've had so far. Mm. But it smells a little bit earthy real ale again. It's not huge amounts going on with that. A kind of citric quality. But yeah, a hint of earthiness to it. Mm. Well, it perks up. I didn't, like, the aroma was not West Coast, but it's got a nice West Coast feel. Lots of lingering bitterness. A nice, really clean, so like California IPA, you know, those really clean, no crystal malt kind of IPAs. Um, yeah, just really lacks aroma and has a little bit of earthiness. So like, not a bad beer, but not a great beer. Yeah, and, and, and that smells great too. Sticky, overripe, tropical fruit kind of thing. Nice. Yeah, it's lacking a bit on the finish. It gets a little bit watery. A lot of these beers have like, Little water chemistry tweaks, a little bit more bitterness, and these beers will be really, really crushable. But they just kind of wash away a little bit, which might even be, it might even be on purpose, because I like bitterness and, stre and strength and, and structure. A lot of people drinking don't really want to know they've just had a big sip of beer. So maybe it's personal taste coming into play here and why these brewers are, are going that way. Uh, <laughs> sorry, bear with, because I've got an aroma in mind, but I can't quite believe I'm getting it. Ginger. Smells like crystallised ginger. Still ginger. Stem ginger. I mean, nobody's putting ginger in IPA, right? It's slightly off-putting, but it's kind of tasty. But I can't, I can't have that. I can smell already from here that one of these is skunked to absolute heaven. Slash hell. Definitely hell. So I'm looking forward to finding out which one of these it is. Not that one. Right, so yeah, really peachy. Yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about that. Loads of yeast character, loads of peachiness, but no real hop character. Yeast character leaps out because it's rounded, it's sticky, it's sweet, it's stone fruity. Hop will always have an edge, a citrus, a bite to it. You know, could be pine, could be citrus, could be hedgerow, whatever it is. There's nothing biting to this aroma, it's just like sniffing a peach. Which is very nice, but it means we might not have any kind of real complexity to this beer. Mm, we kind of do, but not in the right way, so very earthy. Which is a character you'd get from the hops. Um, so maybe, you know, old hops, not huge aroma, just kind of dying on their feet and, and not offering anything except for slightly flabby kind of bitterness. I mean, that's what I would have expected from a tired shelf beer. This is what I thought most of these IPAs were going to be. Uh, that's why it's getting an 18, you know, it's not a bad score. That's what I expected. Oh, right, okay. Got another heavily fruited, fruited beer here. I'm being taken back to my clubbing days as a student. Reef. It smells like reef. Which we used to strawpedo because it had no carbonation. It's not a great memory. It's not a great aroma. Thin and watery, and then marshmallow and bitterness. Weird. Very weird beer. 
I don't know, like whatever they've used, the purees, the flavouring, something in there is not presenting to me like I'd imagine those fruits are supposed to. Because you shouldn't get marshmallow in an IPA. There is no IPA where marshmallow is acceptable. Here we go. West Coast. West Coast all the way. Lovely colour to it. Amber. Amber colour. Crystal bright. Decent head after a swirl. That's a skunky one. Weed, skunks, but caramel. Back on the hazies. I feel like I'm way more picky about my Westies than I am my New Englands. New Englands are very hard to make from a technical perspective, but from a flavour perspective, they're quite forgiving. Uh, West Coasts are almost the opposite. Like, recipes are simple. Oxidation is not quite as big an issue. But to actually get the balance right is very difficult. That smells pretty good. It's a little bit. Mm. I'm going to taste it before I say what I'm getting. So I'm getting some, some diastil from that. Small amounts, but I think that's come from hop creep. So that's when you short, store a, a beer on the shelf, it gets too warm, the yeast starts working again, and you get re-fermentation in that can when there shouldn't be any. And obviously, at the start of fermentation, one of the main things that yeast kicks out is diacetyl, this thing that tastes like Werther's Originals. And I think that's what's happening here. Okay, the finish line is in sight, but unfortunately, it smells of diacetyl. One of these is a diac bomb. Uh, I don't think it's going to be this one. This one looks like a nice, fresh, bright New England IPA. Oh, yeah, that smells very nice indeed. Very fruity, citrusy, pineapple-y. Lovely aroma on that one. Feels like a lovely session beer. It's just got a hint of earthiness on the finish, but otherwise it's a really well-made beer. So really nice aroma. Oh my God. <laughs> Technically perfect, unlike my writing. Ted Hinnikali, a perfect. Uh, citrus, uh, citrus tropical. Jesus Christ. Okay, we're just embracing this at this point. I also write for a living, you know. I, I literally write books. Just in case you're interested in buying books full of typo, I think this is the diet one. Ooh, that has got... Mm, that's not what an IPA should look like, folks. That smells like Werther's Originals and looks like Werther's Originals. That is the colour of a Werther's Original. Yikes. Oh, my God. Well, my grandma would love it. That's a better looking beer. Okay, well, could be some head on that, but sadly not. Um, kind of an apple sherbet thing going on, which I don't encounter in IPAs very often, but it's not the worst. Yeah, sherbetty. Zingy. I feel like a, a lager yeast has been used there or something. There's no real yeast character to it. It's very clean on the finish, very light and bright. You know, te technically, it's okay. But flavour-wise, it's just meh. Right, last one of this round, and then we get on to the final. Yeah, smells good. Citra. Definitely citra. Yeah, that slightly dank, gnarly, weedy thing that citra has, but on top of it is just layered. Mango and peach and citrus. The wasp is back for this one. The wasp has taste in beer. It's a very good smelling beer. Lovely rich body. That flavour all comes through. It's peachy and it's mango-y and it's slightly piney and it's slightly dank and naughty. It's, just, it's, it's like five IPUs short of perfection for me from a New England. Very, very good. Right, I think we've got two more beers in the next round and then it's time for the results. Righty, final round. My beloved pourer generally throws a surprise in here, so I'm excited to see what, what's going to happen this time. Uh, this looks like a nice West Coaster, lovely rich head. Not as rich as this one. Uh, either that's been hard poured or that has been poured through a Luca tap. Um, nice looking beer, expecting some West Coast things from this. Mm. <laughs> oh my God, what? Orange, orange peel. Way, 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 way too much to be hops. Definitely like an oil or a puree. I feel like they misread the recipe. They were supposed to put five kilograms in and put 50. That is massive. No. No, no, no. Oh, my God. I'm going to taste that forever. 
that's like when you, I don't know, you drink, you drink the actual squash and don't water it down. No, I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you props for the aroma, even though it's too much. No, I want that quite far away from me. Right, look at you, you creamy bad boy. Let's see what you've got to offer. <laughs> smells a bit creamy, but I've definitely put that in my head. Uh, citrus, pine, sherbet, and cream. Lactose? Wouldn't have thought so in a beer that was going for West Coast. Well, it's it's got a uh, sweet, lingering astringency. Sweet and astringent shouldn't go together, but apparently they've combined these two things. Swiss astringent, a sweet, awful, creamy, um, sherbety. Um, what did I say? Astringy, sweety. Maybe 23 IPAs is too much. Okay, so it started incredibly strong, had some peaks, and ended on an absolutely crushing low with some warnings of what was to come along the way. Uh, so I've got the beers all out there in pouring order this way as always with four extras. I just tasted 20, 20, 20, 22, sorry, 22 supermarket IPAs, which is more IPAs from the supermarket than I think I've ever drunk. Um, and now we're going to find out the results. So first I'm going to unveil the beers and then I'm going to sort into ascending order. And there we go. So at the top we have Vocation Love and Hate. Now that is a beer that, that there are literally Facebook forums that rate and alert people to what is good in supermarkets in the world of craft beer. Shout out to those nerds. Uh, this beer is one of the most talked about beers. It's the one where like when it's in stock and when it's fresh, literally people will go, this uh, Tesco, I think I got it from, has it fresh. You know, that's how much this is sought after. And what did I write? I wrote peachy, coconut, thick, clean, citric. I stand by all, by all of that except less coconutty than I remember. I'm really hoping there's something in there that's slightly cut. Citra Galaxy. So honestly, 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 occasionally I have got a kind of slightly coconutty, really oily vibe from Galaxy. You know, I've had 22 IPAs at this point, so please take what I say with a slight pinch of salt. But in terms of New England IPAs that we've tasted on the channel, wherever it's from, this, this would compare pretty well to most of them. Like that is tasting absolutely incredible. And it is, so it's brewed in May. So June, July, so that is the absolute limit of my three month brew. And it's tasting fantastic. That is an incredible brewing achievement by vocation. So number two is Northern Monk Heathen, which if you'd asked me, having bought these beers, which two would come top, I'd have probably said these two. You know, it, it's kind of reassuring that the breweries that we know and that we love are the breweries that are able to produce both, you know, beautiful one-off incredible double IPAs and can put something great in the supermarket. You know, it shows that the processes in the brewery are great, the recipes they're coming up with are great, the passion they take and the sourcing of those ingredients and the production of those beers are kind of, if not infallible, like pretty close. Um, and this beer was just, you know, if you want to know an expression of citra in a hazy beer, like that just leapt out of me. That just immediately was citra. And it's really hard in beer because you've got other ingredients. You can't do what wine experts can do, which is like this, this grape from this vineyard and this vintage, because you've got so much else going on. Three other ingredients that can change. Um, but sometimes you really can. And it's absolutely stunning. And, and you know, I was about to say, you can't ask for more from a supermarket beer. You can't even ask that much. You know, a lot of these beers were very tired. Uh, they, they were stale, they had hop creep. You know, the fact they can make something that stands up after a month, probably at room temperature, is absolutely incredible. Um, there's absolutely no surprise that a Siren are at number three. Uh, Buxton drew with them, making some absolutely beautiful beer, um, and always, always will, Buxton. Uh, Brew York was... Right, so that was a definitely not hops one, which makes a lot of sense. The beer critics, the beer writers... 
we'll criticize that kind of beer, but it smells great and it kept its structure, it kept balance, it wasn't overdone. That's a great beer. And if you want to introduce people to beer, this stuff uh, would do really well at that. Uh, and it's super well made. Punk IPA slap bang in the middle. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what Punk IPA is. Beaver Town Space Hulk also slap bang in the middle. Oh, Drew with Punk. Jaipur did quite poorly. Uh, Jaipur. Yeah, it's amazing what context can do. Like next to big juicy beers, expecting tired aroma. Yeah, just, just an all right batch, not tasting brilliant, that one. And so we get down to the, the bottom scoring ones. To the Glore Cameras Brewing, Citrus Centennial, Simcoe, Mosaic. What a waste of those hops. It's not, it's not a tropical IPA. It's, it's almost false advertising. It's really gnarly beer. Um, Green King East Coast, I could have told you it was that one. Don't put it in clear glass. Like, I love that you're trying to do these beers, but please, 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 please put it in the right packaging. Can or brown glass, and that beer will probably present Cascade. Is it Cascade, I think, is in that. Very, very differently, but it stuck out like a sore thumb. So the question I really wanted to answer with this video is, should we be buying beer from supermarkets? And there's kind of two ways of answering this. The first one is ethically. Ethically, no. You know, supermarkets don't do very little good for your local economy other than obviously employing people. Um, if you buy from a local bottle shop, you know, you're going to see somebody literally smile because you know that they're making money from that transaction. You're going to see them supporting the other breweries. You know, half of these breweries wouldn't exist if it weren't for their local bottle shops. Um, and equally, you're going to get a better range and you're going to get the beer cared for better in a bottle shop. It'll be in the fridge. Uh, they'll have chosen, they'll have curated, they'll have chosen the best beers and they'd have looked after it. Um, and obviously, it, it's actually a better profit margin for, for the brewers. Um, not necessarily for the bottle shops, which is an issue that needs to be sorted when the world isn't on fire. Um, should you buy it from a is the beer good perspective? The answer, I'm, like really surprisingly, is a resounding yes. And what was super surprising to me is that the hazy IPAs seem to fare pretty well. I'm always worried about hazy IPAs. You know, the whole thing is the fetish is drink them incredibly fresh. Uh, oxidation is a big issue, all this kind of stuff. And most of the New England style beers held up really well. In fact, the first West Coaster you get is Proper Job. And I think that's because the UK isn't great at making West Coast IPA, to be fair. We were just getting good at it and then New England came along and we, we kind of lost track. So West Coast IPA, I probably still wouldn't buy from a supermarket. I'd definitely go to my local independents. I found 12... 11, 11 or 12 good beers, and I found two exceptional beers in the five supermarkets that I visited. So if you're struggling for money, if you can't justify the expense of going to independent bottle shops all the time, there are options, but do not be sucked into, particularly in Tesco, which has an incredible range, most of that stuff is not going to be good. It's not going to be cared for. It's not going to have the turnover that it needs. It's not going to have been looked after. You're better off going to your indie bottle shop. But hey... Four packs of this and four or six packs of this, you're going to do well out of it. And that is an important lesson in the world that we're living in right now.